Live from London, this is BBC News. The evacuation of thousands of foreign nationals from Sudan continues as the 72-hour ceasefire appears to be holding. Well, some of the first French nationals have arrived back on home territory. U.S. officials claim the Taliban have killed the IS leader behind the Kabul airport bombing. Ukraine ramps up the homegrown production of drones to meet the huge demand from the front line. We have a special report. Hello, I'm Nancy Kachingira. Thanks for joining us. And uh, the first French nationals to be evacuated from Sudan have arrived in Rossi Airport in Paris after their repatriation from Sudan. Let's uh, take a look at the live pictures there. These are people who've just gotten off that plane. Around 250 people left Djibouti after being rescued from Sudan. And uh, the group were some of the first to be evacuated by French forces last week. That's in the midst of the fighting uh, in the capital there in Khartoum. And uh, as we can see, people uh, getting off that plane, just uh, interviewing, being interviewed there and speaking about their experiences. As we've been hearing, it's been harrowing for many of them who've had to find their own way to the airport to get onto these flights. And of course, we'll continue to bring you more as these arrivals continue. Let's hear now from Catherine Bierahanga reporting on the latest from Khartoum. Jean McKenzie there. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. I think we can use a form of capitalism and continue to get its benefits while solving climate change. We should remember that the globalization we had before brought more than one billion people out of poverty. I always associated fashion with fun and joy. Women ourselves are finding our power. We always had a voice. We just weren't allowed to use it. When big names talk, they talk to the BBC. Hello, you're live with BBC News. Now, let's uh, take a look at our next story and head to Ukraine for that. Ukraine says it's ramping up the homegrown production of drones as it struggles to cope with the demand for the technology on the front line. The country has so far purchased more than 3,000 drones as part of its drone army campaign, collecting donations from around the world. Hundreds have been posted directly by the public as military leaders say that even small hobby drones are giving them a rare competitive edge over Russia. Our cyber correspondent Joe Tidy went to Ukraine and sent this report. Well, Ed Sheeran denies that his song was a copy of the 1973 hit by Gay. That trial is expected to last a week. Do stay with us here on BBC News. I'm Nancy Kachingira. Much more coming your way. Don't go away. Now on BBC News, your daily briefing on business and economics from the world's financial centres. From New Broadcasting House in London, World Business Report. Hello, live from London, this is BBC News. Blue skies ahead, Heathrow confirms its top spot as Europe's busiest airport, but blames regulator fees after posting a loss. And is the worst over for big tech? Microsoft and Alphabet beat analyst expectations despite the downturn in the tech sector. And shares in the US bank First Republic tank another 40%, with regulators and Wall Street heavyweights scrambling to ease investor nerves.
Hello there, it's time for your top business stories. I'm Victoria Valentine. Let's start with some breaking news on international travel because Europe's busiest airport, that's Heathrow in London, has just announced its first quarter results and it's made a £139 million loss. That's about $172 million during that period. However, just under 17 million passengers used the airport during the first three months of the year as China's lifting of COVID restrictions boosted passenger numbers. Let's speak now to Simon Calder, the travel expert, who is in Turkey for us today. Um, Simon, I was just looking through some of these numbers. Um, it looks fairly resilient, but of course, you know, this is happening under a backdrop of industrial action, uh, which of course is going to hit Heathrow quite hard. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're a raver. Do I look like a raver? <laughs> I've got bass in a backpack. This is amazing. Dancing for like four or five hours of a gig, you could generate about 800 kilowatt hours of thermal energy. Right, so shall we give it a taste? And it's my favorite. We're really talking to the plants and they're telling us how happy they are. It can fly, but it can also float on water. Oh my God, that came by quick. It's all about augmented reality. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. Hopefully and utterly immersed in another world there. Your tech update. Click on BBC News. You're live with BBC News. Now let's talk about what's going on in the United States. Shares of a bank, First Republic Bank, continue to plunge. They fell 40% on Tuesday, which means the bank shares have fallen 90% over the past two trading sessions alone. This all comes after First Republic revealed its customers had withdrawn $100 billion during the recent banking turmoil, which led to the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. Let's speak now to Victoria Scholar, who's the head of investment at Interactive Investor. Victoria, there doesn't appear to be an end to the bloodletting for this bank. Are we looking at another banking failure, do you think? Let's have a quick look at the markets before I go. Um, US stocks have been sinking, government bonds rallying sharply on Tuesday. A steep sell-off in First Republic shares has reignited fears over the health of the banking sector. The policy-sensitive two-year US Treasury yield has been sliding uh, to 3.93% as its price is climbing. The reason for that is important. Government debt is typically viewed as a haven for investors in times of economic and market stress. So the inversion of a Treasury yield curve is traditionally seen as a harbinger of recession. That's it from me. Plenty more coming up a little later on. We'll see you soon. Live from London, this is BBC News. Some of the first French citizens to be evacuated from Sudan arrived back at Rossi Airport in Paris. The 72-hour ceasefire appears to be holding as the repatriation of thousands of foreign nationals from Sudanese cities continues. US officials claim the Taliban have killed the IS leader behind the Kabul airport bombing. And Ukraine ramps up the homegrown production of drones to meet a huge demand from the front line. Hello there, thank you for joining us. I'm Nancy Kachingira. The UN has said a 72-hour ceasefire between the Sudanese army and a rival paramilitary group appears to be holding in some parts of the country. Thousands of foreign nationals are still trying to get out of the country, with numerous governments organizing evacuations of their citizens. Two UK evacuation flights have landed in Lonaka in Cyprus. This is the second flight landing in just the last couple of hours. As thousands flee, residents in the capital Khartoum have spoken of their fears that the world is abandoning them, with supplies of food, water and medicine there running low. 
Nearly all the shops in the city have closed and residents say that prices of even the most basic goods have doubled. Well, let's get more now on that situation from Louisa Pilbeam. All right, Nick. Well, we appreciate you giving us that update. Nick Garnett in Larnaca in Cyprus for us. Thank you very much. Let's turn away from that top story now and get some of the day's other news. A court in New York has started selecting jurors for a civil rape trial against Donald Trump. Writer E. Jean Carroll has accused the former president of raping her in a New York department store changing room in the mid-1990s. She's also accused him of defamation. Mr. Trump denies the charges. Spain is bracing for a record-breaking spring heat wave. The country's meteorological agency has warned that temperatures in the south of the country could hit 38 degrees Celsius on Thursday, which would set a national record for April. The Spanish government has also asked the European Union for emergency funds to help farmers cope with the effects of a severe drought. A Japanese company that was trying to make the first privately funded moon landing says that it's assuming the mission has failed. It lost contact with the spacecraft. iSpace said that it had been unable to communicate with the unmanned lander since just before it was due to have touched down, but the Tokyo-based company said it would continue trying to communicate with the craft. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC. For Dame Sharon White as chair of the John Lewis Partnership, she's normally focused on profit. But at this blood donation centre in Stratford, the focus was on giving blood and the pressing need for more black donors. I'm so happy. It's been a long time since I last gave blood, about 20 years ago. And it, I just feel really happy and very lucky. Sickle cell anemia is the fastest growing genetic condition in the UK and far more prevalent in black people. Over the last five years, the numbers of blood donations needed to treat it has increased by 66%. I'm here giving blood. This is your first time, is it? It is. Right, well, Lord Simon Woolley, the principal of Homerton College in Cambridge and founder of Operation Black Boat, was also donating. And the two hope that their example will lead to others doing the same. And black donors are particularly important because the ethnically matched blood provides the best treatment and the blood of these two well-known donors will be ready to use within hours. Hello, you're live with BBC News. The Islamic State mastermind, believed to have been responsible for the 2021 bombing that killed dozens at Kabul's airport, has been killed by the Taliban. 70 civilians and 13 American troops were killed when a bomber detonated his device among packed crowds as people tried to flee Afghanistan back in August of 2021. The officials didn't really reveal the name of the man who was the leader of an Islamic State cell. They did say that the leader died weeks ago, but it took time to confirm his death. Seth Jones is Senior Vice President of the Center for Strategic and International Studies, and he's been telling us that the details about the killing are still pretty vague. We'll end with something a little different. Bargain hunters have been out in force in Paris as police auctioned off luxury goods seized during drug raids. One of the star lots was a six-year-old Lamborghini Huracan, which sold for more than $100,000. The auctioneer said that the previous owner liked showing off the car on his social media. And other items under the hammer included designer handbags, shoes and watches. The sale raised more than $1.2 million. That's definitely a posh garage sale. Stay with us here on BBC News. Hello. In many northern and central parts of Europe, spring warmth will be in short supply over the next couple of days, but that is